Give a little refresher of exactly what that is. And for everybody that enjoys it, no, there's a link right down there in the comments. You can go check it out if you enjoy what she says. Uh, well, Menage à Trois basically started, I started that in 2008. Uh, this was my third, yeah, my third webcomic. I had done two prior to that. I started in 2000, in 2008. But this Menage à Trois is the one that I'm the most known for and the most popular one which basically follows the life of this guy. Uh, he's a virgin, and he was living with two guys, and the two guys uh, move out, and he ends up, there's two girls that end up moving in with him, and they, they learn that he's a virgin, and they kind of, like, help him, uh, you know, find, find women to get a girl. Like, he's 29, still a virgin. They're thinking, okay, let's try and get him laid before he's 30. And uh, so that's basically, it's, it's like, a, I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, the old show Three's Company. There's, you know, there's Jack living with the, the two girls. Anyway, it's basically that, but it's just more, uh, a little bit more dirty, you know. It's like, a, not extremely more dirty, but uh, there's nudity, uh, but it's not like uh, hardcore porn or anything. It, it's because it's more about the humor than anything else. But you will see a bit of nudity so that the joke can work. Uh, but that's the, the the thing is more about that. And uh, so, yeah, and he meets, it, it becomes in a way a little, I don't know if you're familiar with the term of the uh, harem manga. Harem manga is basically like one guy and then there's all these girls. It's uh, it's like shonen manga. Uh, it's one of the styles in shonen manga where it's like this guy ends up with like multiple girls and he has to choose which one uh, because they're all interested in him or... You know, he's interested in all of them and he doesn't know which one to pick. And then at the end of the story, he ends up picking the one girl, you know. So it's like, uh, so it's a little bit like a harem manga. Okay. Uh, he meets, uh, he just meets a lot of women. Uh, some of them it works out, some of them it doesn't. And uh, yeah, So and then it ended in 2019. We did some spinoffs. We did two spinoffs while Menage Trois was uh, running. And now we're doing a, a third spinoff. Uh, which is Pixie Tricks Comics, which is basically set in a comic book store, the comic book store that he used to frequent. When uh, he used to frequent a comic book store to get his comics, so he would go there once in a while. So we decided to, and Menage Trois was set in the apartment, while Pixie Tricks Comics is set loosely into the comic book shop. And uh, but then you know they 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 also have apartment. The people that work there have apartments too. So we do get out of the comic book shop and stuff like that. So, uh, so we decided to switch to, to end Menage à Trois mostly because we felt that Gary was the the main guy in uh, Menage à Trois. We thought that his story was sort of done, so uh, we decided to focus on other characters, and this was a way to do it um, without yeah, you know I mean, breaking what we had done with uh, with Gary for Menage à Trois. I mean, we may revisit it later uh, in the future, but for now, we're happy doing what we're doing. So. Yeah, I mean, because that definitely is a story that that should have an ending as far as that. It shouldn't be something that should run forever. Um, now, I'm curious, how do you how do you walk that line to to keep it funny, but still, you know, have a bit of nudity to help the humor, but make it to where it's not too much nudity? Like, have there ever been times where you're drawing something where you're like, what, what, where should I put the line? Well, I mean, I never, uh, I always said, uh, I was okay with drawing uh, like breasts, and I was okay with drawing like butts, but you never see genitals. It was always uh, that was always off. But I mean, it didn't really matter when it came time for advertisers because as soon as you had a, a nipple, you had the ads. You'd, you'd get blocked or you'd get banned, and then you'd have to find a new advertiser. Or the only other option was you could go to uh, like get porn ad but then you become like a porn site you know so we didn't want to become a porn site so it was really tough because uh we just we were losing advertisers like every six months we had to switch advertisers like and then we could spend like a few months without any advertisers and uh but luckily eventually uh we uh, we started doing kickstarters and the kickstarters were, were helpful in funding the the books and stuff like that, so then we didn't have to worry too much about the advertisers. But for like the first, you know, four or six years, it was 
because we only started doing Kickstarters in 2014. Yes, yeah, so, so for six years we were basically, um, you know, at the mercy of the advertisers, and then also we would do like our own kind of Kickstarters, like we do PayPal um, uh, pre-orders, and that used to work. That used pre- pretty well, and then eventually Kickstarter showed up in Canada, and then we started using that in 2014. And, um, and since then, that's been the main source of the revenue for that. And uh, But, you know, our books also, like I have my own edition. I say my own, but it's really our own. Like with I, I work with uh, Dave, uh, Dave Lumsden, who's, you know, in a way, we started this together. And uh, uh, we, we have our own edition with the Kickstarter, but then Udon Entertainment also has uh, collected editions, like uh, omnibus editions of our books. So, so there's two ways to get it. So if you, if you get it directly from me, uh, you're going to get the editions that we did through the Kickstarter. And if you get it like in stores, the comic book shops, you're going to get the Udon edition, which they, they published a few years later. And they're, they're collected editions, like two, two, two or three volumes in one. You know? And there'll be links to all that, as I said, in the descriptions, as well as you've been able to see little teases of some of the art as far as if you're watching. Well, I mean, it depends on how you're consuming this particular quest, whether you're just listening to it. But if you're watching the video, you've been able to see little bits and pieces. I can't put any nips out, Lisa, because, you know, YouTube will real quick pull this video, and then I I can't even say I interviewed you, and I'd be slightly annoyed about that. What was your best workaround on that? Was it was it really when you finally did have Kickstarter? Was that the greatest thing? Because I feel like, I mean, with well, you, you've seen the comic book industry change a lot. From you know web comics okay. getting introduced and then Kickstarter. Well, the last uh, the, like the last three years of Menage à Trois, uh, I had if some a strip had a nudity, I would do a version for the printed book and I would do a version for online. So the online was censored, and then so I would find a way to hide the nipples or whatnot. And then if you bought the printed book, uh, that was I had the version that had you know with the nipples showing and whatnot. I wouldn't censor the book, you know. So that, I did that for the last three years. Uh, I was censoring for the online and then I would uncensor for the books. And uh, then the spinoff, we we made a conscious decision not to show the nudity. So, but they're just, even though we're not showing nudity, there's still, it's the, the dialogue and the, what they're talking about is, is sex, you know. I mean, it's not that they're talking about sex. It's just that there, there are people that are like, you know, of, they're interested in getting together or one guy just wants to go with this girl or whatnot. And, you know, the, they'll be talking about sex, you know. So it's, uh, which is, to me, it's just normal stuff, you know. But I guess it's seen as, as it's seen as a sexual nature. So, you know, some ad- advertisers would say, oh, you're, you're talking about, you're insinuating something, so because of that, it's it's not right. But in general, because it's not text and it's a it's a graphic image, they, they don't really notice it. They don't really see that we're doing that, you know. So, but as soon as if if you're showing a nipple, or whatnot, it's, it's like Facebook and stuff like that. You can't post art that has a bit of nudity on Facebook, or you'll get, you know, you'll get banned or whatnot for a few days, like a month or whatnot. And um, so, let me ask you, why do you think it is? And I mean, this is, I would say, more probably an American thing than anything. Oh, for sure. But, for sure, yeah. it's an American thing. Yeah, yeah. Why do you think it is that, and I'm going to go right back to the guy you're working with currently on Money Shot Comes Again, being Tim Seeley. Mm-hmm. That when, that him doing that is more provocative than, say, Hack Slash, which is violent as all hell. You know what I mean? It's like there's no problem showing someone getting cut straight in half and just gore and blood and flesh and here's a part of their brain and their heart severed in two and really, really graphic shit, you know? But if you show a nipple, oh my God, why, why do you think there is that weird standard? I have no idea. I mean, I'm I grew up uh, like I'm French Canadian, and then we I grew up on reading a lot of uh, 
European BD, like Bande Ciné from, from France and Belgium. And uh, there's nudity in there. And I mean, like, I don't know if you're familiar with the old the movie Barbarella with uh, Jane Fonda. Yeah. I mean, this was, this was an old comic book, you know, from the 70s. There's a lot of nudity in that. And uh, I seen 70s it must have been 60s because the movie was in the 60s. So he, that's an old comic. And yeah. I mean, I, I was reading that. I'm 10 years old and I have Barbarella comics and there's nudity in that and nobody's blinking an eye. Uh, like I, I, I got that at the library at school. You know what I mean? Like, so I, I, maybe this didn't have it in the States, but where I was, it was happening and it, it, nobody was because it was just nipples. Like who cares? You know, it was just like, it wasn't the end of the world. Uh, so I think it's just, it's the culture. It's uh, how some people see things. Uh, to me, it never bothered me, but I guess it that bothers some people in the states mostly. But I mean, in Canada too. I mean, some people out west, especially people that are a little bit more religious, uh, tend to be a little bit more bothered by it. Um, French, French, especially French Canadians, they used to be religious, but they're no they're no longer religious. Most of them, anyway. Um, uh, a lot of them kind of like there was sort of like a backlash with the you know, Catholic religion. So, uh, so I don't know to be honest. Uh, I just, I just try to survive in in that that sea of weirdness. And <laughs> I, I mean, I think I think that's what we're all trying to do. I know six billionaires in a sub failed epically, but that's neither here nor there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I was, I was, you could say that was in poor taste. I don't think it was. Six billionaires went down in a sub that wasn't properly tested and being controlled by a Logitech commercial. That was their own stupidity. They got them yeah. where they were, you know, nothing more, nothing less. But I do think you make a valid point as far as it being religion. Um, and I mean, if you look at, especially uh, Catholicism, Christianity, um, probably, uh, the Muslim religion, um, those religions are very anti-sex. But if you read any of those texts, they're all pretty violent. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. So, so I wonder if that has something to do with it. The fact that those people that are religious, they were always told, oh, no, it's bad to be naughty. But, you know, stone the sinner. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean... But what's really strange is they don't want to talk about sex, yet religion kind of forces people to have tons of babies. And it's like, how do you think babies happen? Uh, you know, uh, so it's just like, I don't know, but... Uh, it, they, it hey, it's the, it's the swan, all right? Don't let them, just let them be in their own delusional world. It's a, it's a swan yeah, it's just flying in, just... Yeah, so, I mean, you know, I have nothing... I'm not. I'm not a religious person, but I have no problem with people. People who are religious, it's their choice. Uh, you, you, it's a free. You know, we're free to do what we want. Uh, it's just that you know, for certain things, I I don't really understand the logic. But you know, I guess these companies like Google or Facebook and whatnot, they're they're having to deal also with a whole bunch of people, you know, going at them. Some people are fine. Some are not. You're trying to please everybody, but then you end up pleasing no one. Um, so it's uh it's kind of strange but it, it is what it is so yeah no i'm a firm believer if you try to please everyone yeah you're, you're right all you're going to do is end up pleasing absolutely no one because you're going to end up making so many compromises so many different places that mm -hmm. that you're going to piss someone off with some compromise you made for someone else and then that person's going to be mad about the compromise you made for them and, and a b z d double x like you're gonna you're gonna get into just yeah it's it's gonna become such a convoluted web that you're gonna tie yourself up in it ostensibly you yeah. know um so so i i totally totally understand your point in that that's that's that makes my head hurt let's just like jesus fucking christ as you would say like seriously <laughs> You're looking at my question. My questionnaire. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a little annoyed that I didn't get your questionnaire printed out before the show. Typically, I would have paper in front of me. I didn't. Okay. I've been I've been mad 
trying to catch up, Lisi, and it's it's been a yeah, it's 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 been a thing, and I'm trying to make it to where you know people aren't doing an interview, and then you know their interview at least comes out like two weeks after it's done, and, and it's, you know you know. So what do you do about that? What's that? It's like when you get in a bind with uh, deadlines. There's the word I was looking for. It escaped my brain for a moment, but it came back. It's okay. Um. Like, what do you do as far as in deadlines when you're trying to keep up with everything, especially based on the fact that, you know, you're doing self-published stuff to where you're doing all of this, as well as you, you know, you're running to where you're doing some, where you're working on major publications and you have to keep up with deadline. What do you do to balance all of that with, you know, life? Um, oh, there was a time where I would uh, work myself to death. Uh, you know, I would barely sleep. I would do like lots and lots of hours. But, uh, you know, I'm getting old now. Uh, I'm in my 50s. <laughs> so for me, it's just uh, I I do what I can in a day. And if I don't make the deadline, too bad. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like there's nothing much I can do. Uh, the only thing that I try to make sure that I have up is my I do two uh, two updates of webcomics in a, a week. I used to do seven I used to update a webcomic every day, and then I, I went down to like five, then to three, and now I'm just doing two. And I'm, I'm okay with two. It allows me to also do stuff for like the mainstream. And uh, so, you know, so that I try to make sure I do. Uh, I may miss one update if I'm doing like a convention or whatnot, uh, but I don't do a lot of conventions, so I don't, I, I rarely miss. Uh, so, but yeah, I mean, you know. I'm not the fastest person when it comes to uh, drawing. I used to be faster. I just now I'm a little bit more relaxed and I just want to do it right. I don't want to send out something I won't be happy with. And if it takes a little bit longer to do, well, it just takes a little bit longer to do. I, I try to, uh, you know, they'll ask if I'm working with someone, they'll, they'll ask me, well, how long do you think it's going to take? Well, I'll say roughly this, but, you know, it, it, I may take a little bit longer, you know, so People who work with me will have to adapt. It's more than that. So if a book is a little bit late, it could be my fault. Sometimes it's not my fault. Other people, too, are involved, you know. Some people get sick. Some people, you know, end up can't doing something at the time that they wanted. So uh, life goes on. I think, you know, I think a lot of people are like that now. I mean, I mean it's, it's, it's not, I mean, I, I haven't, I don't read a lot of comics lately, so I'm not too sure how the market is going, but. From what I remember, uh, books being late and stuff like that, it wasn't something that never happened. Uh, so so people, you know, I think realize that comic artists and have lives and you can't, even though you try to, to make a deadline, you, sometimes you just can't, you know, something happens or or it's your choice. Well, you, you want two artists on this versus just one. Like, I'd rather wait two extra weeks for a book or whatever than have the same artist on it then I think DC for a while they were using, you know, they really wanted to make, you know, they wanted to be on time. And then they had like three artists on one book and then you would be switching pages and it would look like something else. And it was like, you know what? I'd rather wait an extra two weeks and have the same artist do the whole thing. You know, it, to me, it's like, it's disrespectful to the artist to do that. Like to, to switch artists like that, like on, within the same book, it's just like, if you want to treat an artist like if like they're they're worth nothing, well, this is it. Like this is basically as low as it can go. Is give a book to like three or four or five people, and it's like it's like it's like it's like the artist is is not worth anything. Uh, to me, that's like the worst. Uh, it's writers they don't seem they don't they don't seem writers don't suffer the same thing. <laughs> Like, I don't know how it is today. I haven't read DC or Marvel in a long... Well, I've read a bit of Marvel. Uh, I, I've read a bit of that X-Men stuff. But DC I haven't touched in a while, even though I, I was a DC person for the longest time. Uh, but, uh, yeah. I, I remember I was... I think it was Batgirl or something I was following in it. And it's like, in the same book, I'm like, three artists. And I was like, wow. That's like... Uh, yeah, to me, that's like a turnoff. I mean, you, you won't see me buying the book. I, it doesn't feel personalized. It doesn't. It, I don't know. It just doesn't. In a way, I think that's why manga or manga is more uh, 
popular with a lot of people because you, you have one vision, you, you have the same artist the whole way through, and that's it, you know. Okay, sure, he's got the helpers or, or she has helpers, but it, it has the same look. It's not going to change, you know. It's like, uh, so, yeah, I think that's that's what's going on there. So I think, and maybe that's why, uh, or I hope anyway, that the, the creator-owned stuff is is doing better than it used to because people want to see the one vision on something, you know. So. I mean, it's funny that you said that. We I had Heather Antos on uh, not that long ago. Phenomenal, phenomenal chat, phenomenal individual. Um, and, I mean, she was the head editor on Deadpool for Marvel when they were doing... Look, I you heard, I'm the Wade Wilson of hip-hop. I love Deadpool. I've loved Wade Wilson way before Ryan Reynolds was ever inclined to play him. I assure you. But b- there was a point when Marvel was, you know, putting out four Deadpool books a month. And I'm like, come on now. What's going on here? Can you just ease it back? It's a little much. And I understand. And Heather said this. Marvel was ostensibly, you know, they'll grab a fruit, squeeze all the juice out of it, and they'll be mad at the fruit when it doesn't have any juice left. Or like, what's wrong with you? It's like, well... You know, you put it out all as quickly as you could trying to make a profit. You didn't spread it out over time. (laughs) But she said she had that same issue when they were doing that with Deadpool. Um, As far as... uh, Oh, that's interesting. Uh, Sorry, I had a chair issue. Um, (laughs) What you gonna do? Um, As far as they were switching artists, they were doing 100-page books that had several artists in them. And I, I do think there are times where that can work you know but it has if it's a different book it's not too bad i'm talking on the same book you know it's like uh you know you have one page one to ten is an artist at uh, 11 to uh 11 to you know 20 someone else and the last three four pages and someone else because they couldn't you know <laughs> it's just like uh, that's pretty bad uh, oh no but i mean it it's, it's okay there, you know yeah there are times where because Deadpool like, had more than one series, probably. They had different series, oh, different artists. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but she was talking, like, within the same books, they would do things. But if you're doing something to where, like, like when they did a 100-page book, I, they had to have several artists, obviously, because it wasn't possible. But it ended up being several different stories. But I've seen yeah. also comics where, you know, they'll have a guest artist come in for two pages. But, the, yeah. If, yeah. if it's, a, like, a scene of, like, a, a dream sequence or something like that, yeah. I can see that. You know, that, that can work. Yeah, that's what I'm referring to is when you can really make that work is when it's just one particular moment in that mm-hmm. in that and then then it can work. But yeah, if you're switching artists just for the sheer you have to keep up with it. I I fully agree that's very, very that's it's not Catwoman the movie off putting, but it's pretty damn off putting. I don't know. Maybe it is Catwoman the movie off putting. I haven't watched Catwoman the movie except that one time because I was like, "What in the hell is this?" Yeah, because that was a bad, that was a bad movie. You know, even I, you went with one of the films that hasn't been mentioned many times on the questionnaire as far as for worst comic, but you is kept in the same camp is because it's. Pretty much every time somebody names the comic that didn't live up to a movie, there are very, very few times. And y'all can go check the Patreon and check almost everyone's questionnaire at this point. Hell, actually, at this point, maybe everyone's questionnaire up until including her. Um, but they, they, they all named DC films. Pretty much. I mean, over over half easily. It was a DC film that was named. I'm curious in that. Do you have anything that you've worked on? in your entirety of your career that you would like to see transitioned into another medium as far as a TV or a movie? Um, well, Menage a Trois would be fun to, uh, to see on TV. Uh, but I've also worked on some stuff where I'd like to see the, I'd like to see a video game of it. Um, it's like, um, like it's not, I just, I don't need to, to be like movie or TV. It could be a video game. So, um, yeah, I mean, Menage Trois is the most known, so probably that was the one would make the most sense. But, you know, I have other properties that 
Uh, like we've we've created like this little superhero universe uh, with characters that are kind of fun that could be used for like a video game. Uh, so to me, uh, yeah, I'm open to all kinds of stuff.